Okay, we're gonna create a demand function for this specific example here. So in this one, we have a baseball team plays in a stadium that holds 66,000 spectators. And what they're doing is they're researching about ticket prices and um, we wanna create a function based on this. So at a price of $8, the average attendance has been 28,000 spectators, right? But then they drop the price to $5 and the attendance rose to 33,000 um, spectators. So our goal here is to create a demand function, D of Q. All right, Q is going to be quantity, number of spectators, and um, P is going to be the price. So it's important to note <laughs> demand functions always connect together price and quantity. But sometimes our input's going to be price, sometimes our input's going to be quantity. So in this case, we want to be careful that we want to know that we're looking for D of Q. So what that tells us is Q is our input and our price P is gonna be the output. All right, so please refer to however they define this to help you um, get it in the correct order. The next thing to note on this is at the end here, we assume that D of Q is gonna be linear. So linear means it's gonna be like a line. So as we set up lines, remember it's gonna be, usually we think of this as like Y equals MX plus B. But in our case, our variables have changed, right? Our input is not going to be an x, it's going to be a q. So over here, I'm going to write m times q plus b, and our output is going to be a price. So p equals m times q plus b. It really fits into that same formatting as we've seen with lines before, linear functions. It's just a little bit confusing because we're changing up our variables. Next thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and create some ordered pairs. All right, to get the equation of a line, a linear function, it's important that we go ahead and find the slope of this line. To do so, let's look at ordered pairs. So the first one I notice is we had a quantity of 28,000, right, a value for Q, went with a price P of eight. The other ordered pair that we got here is gonna be we had 33,000 quantity, number of spectators went along with five, as far as the price goes. From here, let's go ahead and find the slope of our linear function, this line, by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now you can choose either one to be your sub ones and the other one to be your sub twos. I'm gonna start with 33,000. Nope. I'm gonna start with a y value of five minus eight over the corresponding 33,000 minus 28,000. Let's see if we can do a little bit of reducing down here. I get negative three in our numerator, and I believe that's 5,000 in our denominator. So let's go with that for right now and think about plugging in. All right, now our function can look like P equals negative three over 5,000 times Q plus B. Now we're almost there, but we don't know B just yet. So in order to find B, I think it's going to be important that we go ahead and we could either use the point slope form or the slope intercept. I'm going to choose to, uh, to just use the format we're already in, the slope intercept form. And I'm going to choose one of these two values and try to plug it in, right? These ordered pairs over on the left hand side. Let's say I'm going to use the one that's in red. Okay, so in that case, our price was five, gets filled in for P, negative three over 5,000, and that's gonna be multiplied by 33,000. Still plus B. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and think of that 33,000 as being over one, so I can combine these fractions together by multiplying them. So I get five equals negative 99,000 over 5,000. Well, that's gonna reduce down some at least. All right, the thousands get to cancel out, both multiples of 1,000. Oh, and I should bring along my plus B. Let me not forget that. So I'm at five equals negative 99 over five plus B. Well, to get B by itself, I, I wanna move that negative 99 fifths to the other side. So I'm gonna do my work over to the side here. I'm gonna say that's five plus 99 fifths 
is going to equal our b. And to get my final answer here, it's going to be important we get the common denominator, right, to add fractions. So I'm going to treat that as 5 over 1. I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator both by 5. So 25 fifths plus 99 fifths is going to be our value for b. So that works out to be 124 fifths. Nice exact answer. Let's take that back up where our b was, way up here. Before I filled in, I'm going to get rid of the b, and I'm going to replace it with plus 124 fifths. And in this case, you could choose to use a decimal instead of 124 fifths if you like, but I like fractions. Nice exact answers every time. So that's going to be our final answer, the demand function that models our situation here. Hope this helps out.